Hi everybody, welcome back to Two News Live at the Aviation Festival. Uh, my name is Martin Cowan, I'm Editorial Director for Two News, and in a change to our advertised schedule, um, I've got Brian Porter, who's the Chief Commercial Officer for Open Jaw, on the sofa with me. Brian, thanks very much for taking the time to join us. Hi Martin, um, Hi Open everyone, Jaw. thanks for having me. Open Jaw Tech, as a business most people are, are familiar with, so what's the you know, what are the, the, the big things, you know, on your to-do list at the moment from an open jaw perspective? Well, Martin, at the, at the very core of what we provide as OpenJaw is, a, is a, a very sophisticated retailing platform that connects directly to uh, the airline's PSS, um, as well as multiple third-party um, ancillary sources of supply. We've got a very sophisticated rules engine in our middleware that uh, synchronously creates combinations of product offerings uh, based on predefined business rules that can be served up to a customer based on intent and other parameters that we have about the customer, such as a frequent flyer number or a customer identifier, for instance. Okay. That's then served up through our digital experience, which is our, our front-end selling flow, which is a, a fully responsive um, selling flow that works across uh, multiple devices, um, or available uh, for output through our stateless API um, or via NDC. Okay, yeah. I just because I was just sort of looping back there because that's a phrase that I used to hear quite often, but I haven't heard for a while. This idea of a, a rules engine. Yeah, I mean, can you just explain what what that is and how that is? integrated into your, your platform. Oh, absolutely, I think Martin, one of the, the things that you would have heard a lot about now is um, dynamic offers, you know, yeah. and you know, the ability to create dynamic offers. And at the heart of our platform, we've always um, had a super PNR construct or a, a, a construct of a, a PNR that is uh, broader than just um, the, the air transaction. So we can effectively uh, provide an entire, an, an entire itinerary within that order. And, and similarly, within our business rules engine, we've got the opportunity to um, dynamically discount, dynamically bundle, um, and pull uh, different products from different suppliers and uh, create um, an assembled itinerary or offer for the customer. Okay. So that's essentially the heart of the business rules engine, um, providing business rules with an interface that um, our customers can go into um, and change the values and the variables. One of the, the reasons why we're talking about a business rules engine again is, um, over the last year and a half at OpenJaw, we've made a, a significant investment in building out a big data platform. Okay. So uh, we've actually uh, calling this our, our, our T data solution. And we hired in a, a, a bunch of data engineers and data scientists who typically had come from the banking field. Um, and they've put together a, a model um, for data aggregation for travel. And through that, we were able to put, um, put out, pull out insights into travelers, such as their propensity to buy certain types of products. So uh, one customer might have a higher propensity to uh, buy a lounge pass, another customer a higher propensity to take extra baggage, based on um, information that we've been able to glean from historical transaction data and lookalike audiences. Similarly, we, we're able to predict the, the lifetime value of a customer, and by utilizing that information and pulling that information via an API from our data platform, we're able to combine that with our rules engine to start looking at those parameters such as customer lifetime value or propensity, and dynamically assemble an offer that's either discounted to drive conversion or uh, bundled based on the customer's predilection to buy a certain type okay, of product. Okay, I mean, that's interesting that you talked about that your, your data scientist came from from the banking center, because I do, I, do, I do wonder, you know, to what extent data is becoming commoditized. There's just a massive amount of data out there, and why does, you know, travel tech company A pull a different result from the same data pool than travel tech provider B? But it seems as if by bringing in people from outside of travel, you, I mean, is it more? I mean, presumably, it is more complicated than just seeing things there that people in travel haven't. But I mean, what 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 else did these sort of did, did you get from outside of travel? Oh, absolutely. So um, our chief data scientist, Dr. John Carney, actually came from Citibank. Now, okay. there are a couple of things that are very similar um, if you take a look at the banking sector and the travel sector. First of all, immense amounts of information about the customer's preferences based on historical transaction data, as well as intent data when that customer yeah. is actually searching through direct channels. 
Um, and similarly, you know, in the banking sector, you've got immense amounts of information about the customer's behavior based on their current account details. Similarly, you know, if you take a look at the banking sector, quite often uh, the, the, the current account is effectively a loss leader. Mm -hmm. um, and in travel, you know, we take a look at the airline seat and that um, represents an incredibly small margin for airlines. You take a look mm -hmm. at IATA, around 5%. Yeah, yeah, okay. But around that, you take a look at the, 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 the broader itinerary once you're able to offer um, uh, bespoke uh, combinations of ancillaries to that customer, there's a much higher capacity for margin in terms of that broader set of travel ancillary products. And it's similar in the banking sphere. You know, mm. if you've got a customer, you know, you've, you've, you've hooked him on um, or her on that current account, but the real value is being able to provide a home loan or a car loan yeah. or an insurance product or the other bundled ancillaries that you can really build um, out of that current account. We see a lot of similarities between that model and essentially the seat on the flight. I mean, that's, that's yeah. quite interesting. I haven't heard that, you know, that explained that clearly before. So, um, you know, you know, big data is, is back on the agenda. It's even bigger than it was when it was first on the agenda. I mean, where, does, where, where, where do you source your data from? I mean, is it a, how many different data sources are you pulling in for your clever data scientists to work out the lifetime value of the customer? Well, at the, at the moment we're building out a model, and yeah. in that we're trying to be as flexible as possible in terms of being able to incorporate multiple sources of data. So at the moment, um, uh, we've got a couple of beta projects that we're working with um, customers and prospects on at the moment. And the data sources that we're utilizing is um, obviously our own T-Retail platform. Yeah. We're pulling in the super PNR or the order data. Um, we're pulling in data from the PSS directly, so we're pulling in um, ticketed data. We are pulling in data from uh, uh, social media channels, so we're able to pull in uh, Twitter and Facebook data. And then we're pulling in data from third-party CRM or loyalty uh, uh, systems. So we've got a data model that effectively compiles all of that data in a, in a central data lake. And then uh, we perform identity resolution across all of that data. Um, and then on top of that, we es essentially make that data available via a data mart through an API into a visualization tool that allows our customers to take a look and start identifying clusters and segments and business mm -hmm. intelligence through that data set. But in addition to that, we're, we're, we're actually um, applying uh, uh, machine learning um, and, and, and sophisticated algorithms to that data where we're uh, dynamically identifying clusters of purchase behavior. So for instance, we might identify um, a business cluster as opposed to um, a cluster of uh, passengers who um, only book for their annual holidays. Um, similarly, we're able to identify based on uh, purchase intent um, and historical purchase data, customers that have churned, and more importantly, a customer data set of, custom, of customers who are likely to churn. So that allows us to facilitate um, campaigns, like a win-back campaign, for example. Yeah. But because we're making all of this data available via an API, we've actually integrated our big data platform with our retail platform. So when a, when a customer is self-identified um, through a frequent flyer number or through having registered through one of our um, customer's platforms, we're able to make a synchronous call to our data system while the customer's uh, performing a search. And based on the information that's returned, we identify the customer's propensity for a certain com uh, combination mm -hmm. of products, the customer's um, lifetime value, so how much value they represent to the airline, and that allows us to apply business rules in terms of how the offer's presented back to the customer based on uh, the type of products they're likely to convert on, and we can also discount the, the, the overall bundle based on what we know about the, the overall value that mm. that customer is going to bring to the airline. So okay. that's an incredibly powerful tool, just in terms of where we're going and you know where we see the future of being able to provide dynamic offers to airlines. I mean, customers. that's quite interesting that you seem to be able to almost sort of to, to preempt churn. Yes, that's quite an interesting idea. I and mean, one of my things that I find quite fascinating is the extent to which travel and aviation acquires the customer, and then the, the disinterest there yes. sometimes is around retaining that customer. So that's interesting. I mean, just. Just to, so to, to, just to round off, I mean, what, what, what sort of conversations are you having now 
that maybe you weren't having a year ago? I mean, what's the, what are airlines asking from OpenJaw and the other tech platforms that well, maybe think, they weren't I think asking it, it, a year ago? I think increasingly sophisticated. So, you know, historically, you know, we've been in a, in a situation where, in, in terms of providing a retail platform to our customers, we've very much been focused on direct channel distribution, you know, and focusing on those airlines that have really a broad opportunity for, for direct distribution. You know, NDC means that we've extended that conversation to indirect distribution as well, you know, and the same type of insight that we're seeing for direct distribution, you know, you've heard a lot of airlines here talking about Netflix and Amazon and yeah. in, in terms of how they can provide recommendations um, to customers. We're able to provide that kind of um, insight, um, but, but we're able to act on that insight both in the direct channel and in the indirect channel. So we're certainly seeing a, a, a heightened level of sophistication um, from uh, airline customers in terms of how they're wanting to communicate and uh, essentially present their offerings to the customer. Okay, yeah. so it's, it's, it's the, like the, the, the user interface is becoming more relevant, okay. Absolutely. Well listen, that's great Brian, thank you very much for Martin, stepping in at Thank you very notice. much for having me. Okay, right, this is T News Live at the Avi Aviation Festival. I'm Martin Cowan, I'm saying goodbye, but I'll be back shortly. Thank you very much.